JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for May the 31st. I am Haralamus Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD. And I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, yesterday the US dollar traded higher against most of the other major currencies and during the Asian uh, session today it lost uh, ground only versus the Canadian dollar and the Aussie while it gained the most versus uh, the yen, the franc and the British pound. The greenback was nearly unchanged against the euro. Now the strengthening of the risk linked Looney and Aussie combined with the weakening of the safe haven yen suggests that market participants uh, may have opened uh, the week in a risk on fashion and indeed taking an, a look at, um, at the performance of the equity world we see that this was a case all but one of the European indices under our radar traded in the green with the only exception being Spain's IBEX 35. The positive appetite rolled over into the Asian session today. Among the indices we monitor only Japan's Nikkei slid uh, and at this point it's worth mentioning that markets in the US remained closed yesterday in celebration of the Memorial Day. Now the further improvement in investors' appetite during the European session yesterday may have been the result of news that uh, Chinese authorities are planning to remove several COVID-related restrictions on businesses on Wednesday using the lockdown measures adopted around two months ago and also, and also are uh, planning to introduce new policies uh, to support the wounded economy. Now with that in mind, PMI data today revealing another month of contraction for the world's uh, second largest economy did very little to hurt uh, appetite. Investors now see the prospect of improvement in case uh, more restrictions are, uh, are lifted and that's why they decided to keep adding to their uh, risk exposures. However, Although we see the case for equities to keep climbing north due to that for now, we are reluctant to call for a long-lasting recovery. Uh, yesterday the preliminary CPIs for Germany came in much higher than expected, suggesting that Eurozone's inflation rates may have also risen by more than anticipated during the month of May. So, uh, higher inflation increases speculation for higher rates and higher rates mean uh, mean bo higher borrowing costs for European companies, which is not uh, overly positive for uh, for European equities. What's more, in the US Fed Governor Christopher Waller said that he's advocating for 50 basis points hikes uh, on the table every meeting until uh, we see substantial reduction in inflation. Uh, pure in cold water on speculation that uh, the Fed may pause after summer. Until we get that, I don't see the point of stopping, Waller clearly added. So, uh, if, we, if we are having Fed officials saying that they may not pause uh, their policy after summer, uh, this means more rate hikes, faster rate hikes, and again, this is uh, relatively negative for equities. Now, back to the Eurozone CPIs. Uh, the, headline the headline rate is expected to have risen to 7.7% year over year from 7.4%, but the HICP excluding food and, uh, food and energy is forecast to have ticked down to 38 from 3.9%. However, as we already mentioned, following the upside surprise in the German data yesterday, we expect a similar outcome here as well. Last week, ECB President Christine Lagarde said that the ECB is likely to take its deposit interest rate out of the negative territory by the end of uh, September and could lift it further if needed. 
Now, given that the deposit rate is at minus 0.5 percent, we initially be we initially believed that this means two quarter point liftoffs, one in July and one in September. And actually, some other ECB officials uh, also supported that view. So, with that in mind, we believe that a strong acceleration in inflation today could cement uh, could cement the case for a rate increase July in July. But it could also increase speculation that the size of that first rate hike could be 50 basis points rather than 25 basis points. This could keep the euro supported against uh, most of its uh, major peers, even against uh, the US dollar for now. However, we are reluctant to call for a long term trend reversal in euro dollar. After all, the Fed is still expected to continue hiking at a faster pace than the ECB, and even if participants see the ECB accelerating its, accelerating its own process, we doubt that euro area policymakers will adopt a path similar to that, of the Fed, to that of the Fed. After all, the US economy is in a better shape than, uh, than the Eurozone, which could uh, allow Fed officials to keep delivering double hikes despite some fears of a slowdown recently. Waller is one of those uh, willing to continue doing so and more of his colleagues supporting that view could eventually help the US dollar uh, to recover at, uh, at some point. Now flying to Canada, the Lunik was the main gainer among the majors, boosted by by data showing that uh, the nation's current account balance uh, turned positive, marking the widest uh, surplus since the second quarter of uh, 2008. Now our view this solidifies even further the case for another double hike by the Bank of Canada tomorrow and increases the chances for another hoggish narrative. That said, before the meeting, we get the nation's GDP data for the first quarter later today. The annualized quarter-over-quarter -quarter rate is forecast to have declined to 5.4% from 6.7%, but to be honest, we doubt that this could derail a Bank of Canada officials from delivering a uh, 50 basis points hike tomorrow. After all, the data refer to the first, to the first quarter of the year, and we are already well in, into the second, with the Bank of Canada appearing very optimistic uh, at its latest gathering, which was held on April 13 still after the first quarter was over. Now, on top of that, monthly data concerning months of the second quarter are justifying the case of another uh, double hike. The unemployment rate slid further, while inflation kept accelerating in both headline and core terms. Now, as uh, for tonight, after uh, the Canadian data and before uh, the and before uh, the Bank of Canada decision, we get Australia's GDP for the first quarter. The quarter over quarter rate is forecast to have slid to 0.7% from 3.4%, something that will take the year over year rate down to 3% from 4.2%. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.